Pio for the update uh, on our Futures Earnings Summit. Uh, thanks, Jeremy. Actually, I'm I'm muted by a cold, um, so Sarah, if you could do something about that, I'd I'd actually very much appreciate it. I wish I could. Um, do you want to advance your own slides, or would you like me to do that? I can at least no, do that for you. If if you could do that for me, that that would make things a bit easier. Um, All right, so, got it. Um, just a brief opportunity for an update. It looks like people on the call here are mostly familiar with Arctic Observing Summit. Uh, the next slide shows the uh, the schedule uh, for for those uh, um, 10, 12 days. As you're aware, you know we've got the Arctic Science Summit week, um, we've got the Arctic Observing Summit, and then senior Arctic officials meeting, uh, all taking place more or less at the same time. And and what we're trying to do, and I think we're making good progress and and getting to that point is to be sure that there's good communication and, and cross-fertilization amongst these different groups. With the uh, Tuesday, 15th of March, International Arctic Assembly uh, serving as a, as a way to bring everybody, um, senior Arctic officials, Arctic Council working group leads, the research community, early career researchers and students involved um, with activities like the Model Arctic Council, uh, folks from, from the uh, uh, or, or representatives of different stakeholder um, groups or organizations and, and others into the same room. Um, so that's Tuesday. That's going to be followed by a banquet for, for all of those participants. So that, that should be a great start to the observing summit itself. And so the next slide is, is just a brief um, recap of the, uh, of the overarching goals of the, of the summit. Again, you're, you're probably all familiar with this. Um, so both serving um, as, a, um, as a forum for coordination exchange between all of those groups who are involved in sustained Arctic observations, um, uh, while at the same time uh, making progress on, on how this would be moving forward. Next slide uh, gives you um, a uh, uh, sort of additional motivation for this. This is uh, from a few years back, but basically, the question is, well, why, why, do we, why do we need something like the Observing Summit? And, and uh, this analysis that Olivia Lee and a few of us have, had done of sustained observations in the, uh, in the U.S. Maritime Arctic, shown here is, is just the Chuck G. C. section, um, indicated that um, we, we've got this interesting mix of different entities who are carrying out sustained observations. And just as a um, uh, point to make is, of course, the industry <clears throat> proportion of this um, of these sustained observations now, uh, with with Shell pulling out of the Chukchi Sea, is going to decline, um, you know, significantly. But at the same time, it's not going to go away completely. There are a number of other activities underway uh, that are relevant, both on the oil and gas uh, side. But you may be aware that actually. Uh, as, as we speak, preparations are, are underway to lay down a fiber optic cable that actually cuts through right this area, and there's going to be some level of, of activity associated with that. Um, what's, what's actually going to increase um, and, and already has over the past few years are uh, sustained observations by foreign countries in U.S. waters. That's still listed here somewhere around a fifth, that, that likely is now more on the order of a third of all observations. And so there's substantial need to um, ensure or, or help make sure that all of these are, are uh, conducted in a way that both we, we have, you know, minimal duplication and, and maximum uh, synergy from the observations. And that, of course, as importantly, data are accessible and, and that partnerships are in place to, to ensure that those who, who want to work with the data uh, actually have access to them. And that, that continues to be a challenge that we're hoping to make some progress on. Uh, next slide. Uh, so what I want to do is um, uh, just briefly um, review what, what we're expecting to come out of this and then um, highlight a few key themes of the summit. Um, and, and the idea being that I'm, I'm looking at the clock here. Originally, I, I had just put this in there, um, but it, it looks like we have a bit more time, so I don't have to be too rushed. Um, so in, in, with respect to products and outcomes, um, the, uh, in addition to the 
uh, sort of core documents that we expect to come out of the summit that, that are going to be specific with respect to action items, action plans, recommendations, with the audience for those being um, a combination of um, the Arctic Council working group. So we're very much interested in um, linking up with the various working group leads and members that are going to be at the meeting, and I'll, I'll explain here in a minute how, how we're planning to do that. Uh, but of course, other other audiences include the private sector as well as um, other uh, uh, government agencies, including funding agencies. Uh, one one of the products of the summit that you can already access now are the close to 100 white papers and short statements that have been submitted by various uh, groups from 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 the research community and other organizations. Those are available for review at the um, AOS website, ArcticObservingSummit.org, and. Um, uh, in the uh, in in the coming days, um, we will have synthesis documents uh, that essentially summarize key points from these white papers uh, in the context of the six uh, themes of the summit that I'll, I'll explain a bit more about here in a minute. Posted as well, so those hopefully make them a bit more accessible. But if you look at those um, documents, they're actually quite quite interesting. Give a good perspective on what some of the key key issues are. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, we. Could, I mean, this is just uh, again organizing committee. You can pull up the next slide already, um, uh, just to give you perspective on on who's involved. Uh, this here is is an organizational chart, um, and uh, really all this is meant to illustrate is that um, both one of the strengths, but of course also one of the challenges in organizing a summit like that, which which is both a combination of bottom-up activities by various um, uh, research groups or organizations out in the field, if you will, and and others who are, who are tied into larger national and international programs and organization structures is to make sure that there's good connectivity. And we see the both the white papers, participation in the summit as well, um, and some of the some of the ways in which there's been outreach to parts of the research community and, and key stakeholders um, as an important um, part of this 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 whole structure. What you see here as well are the six um, um, six themes of the summit. Uh, again, I'll, I'll review these here briefly in a minute. Um, and um, uh, in this case, they you know we we've, we've tried to link this also to national efforts that are relevant to IARPIC. Um, so we've, in this case here, tied this to the goals of the Arctic vision and strategy of NOAA, um, and you'll see that uh, all six themes are, are, are quite responsive to those, but, but similar links exist to research priorities by, by other federal agencies. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so let's just briefly um, review the, the six uh, thematic working group. Group number one, co-chaired by uh, Jeremy Mathis um, and um, Andrea Tilcha, who's uh, with the uh, uh, European Commission, oversees the U European Commission's or European Union's uh, Horizon 2020 program, which of course is going to make substantial commitment towards sustained observations in the context of their call for uh, sustained observations that's, that's out now. Um, looking at international and national strategies for sustained support of long-term Arctic observing. Um, Jeremy can speak more to that. We're, we're grateful for, for these two to have put together a very compelling program that looks at um, sustained observations by different national, um, from, from, from different countries, national agencies, as well as international frameworks. Um, theme number two, technology and innovation for sustained Arctic observations, co-led by Cliff Sweat and Runa Storvold, um, and here the focus is on, on a combination of um, uh, autonomous systems, in particular um, unmanned aerial systems and other, other sensor networks. Theme three, contributions of the private sector and industry, sustained observations, co-led by Paul Haltus, who's president of the World Ocean Council and Industry Consortium, um, and David Arthurs with the Canadian Polar View um, Consortium. Next slide gives you the, the, uh, the other three themes. Uh, theme number four is co-chaired by Craig Fleener, who's uh, Special Advisor, Arctic Policy Advisor to the Governor uh, for the State of Alaska, and Martin Summercorn, who leads uh, World Wildlife Foundation's uh, Global Arctic Program, looking at actor and stakeholder engagement and, and needs in sustained Arctic observations. Theme five, 
um, links to Arctic observations in the context of global observing initiatives, co-led by Dominique Barreau with, with the WMO and, and the Group on Earth Observations and Hiroiki Inamoto uh, with the National Polar Research Institute in Japan. And this, um, this theme in particular is interesting because we, we will have, well, one of the goals of the meeting is to, to better link um, the, the uh, activities in the Arctic to international programs. And we'll actually have a keynote address from uh, Barbara Ryan, who's, who's director of GEO, who will be there. Um, we'll, we're looking forward to also hearing from other uh, national agencies uh, on, this, on this theme. We have um, uh, Stephen Boltz, who's NOAA assistant administrator uh, for, for satellite programs and head of NESDIS, who's, who's going to be giving uh, a keynote lecture. And we'll have the director of the World Climate Research Program there as well. And, and this group in particular, I, I think, has, has put forward some interesting points on how to better achieve those, those linkages. And then theme six um, is uh, co-chaired by Rachel Daniel um, with Pew uh, Foundation, Lena Kielsen Holm with, with the Green Environmental Institute, and Rod Lang with the Nunziavut government in Canada, is focusing on interfacing indigenous knowledge, community-based monitoring, and scientific methods. Um, and the next slide, I just wanted to give you a brief flavor of, of what some of these themes have lined up, and then I'll, I'll, um, I'll um, I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, so theme three is um, the focus there is to find and identify uh, actual frameworks for industry or, or private sector public um, uh, partnerships with respect to sustained observation of data sharing agreements. Uh, the World Ocean Council has a, has, a, has a Vessels of Opportunity program, and the idea is to see how that can be expanded into the Arctic and used not just in the context of Vessels of Opportunity, but really platforms of opportunity, including on land. We're hoping to have um, um, a good discussion uh, that will include folks from industry who are looking at the um, Alaska Liquid Natural Gas Pipeline that, that in some ways you can think of as, as potentially a, a great platform of opportunity for sustained observations. Um, we'll have um, participation by, by the fisher, fishing industry. Um, they, of course, have, have programs that um, collect data um, on, on their vessels. And it would be interesting to see, in particular, how the partnership that, that the fishing industry in, in the U.S. has with NOAA with regards to handling of those data, that may actually have some, some important lessons. So, so it would be interesting to see um, how, how these different programs may be, may be implemented on, on a larger scale. And, of course, from the fishing industry in particular, there's significant interest um, with, the, uh, with the moratorium that was um, agreed upon by, by the Arctic coastal states last year in the context of, of um, Arctic Council negotiations. And Ambassador David Balton, who's, who's been leading that, will be at the meeting as well. He's actually presenting on, on the Tuesday to sort of discuss in a bit more detail what the implications for that agreement are from a, from a research and, and science policy interface perspective as well. Um, and uh, next slide then, uh, again, to just a bit more detail on, on theme four. Um, Co-led by Craig Fleener, and here one of the uh, one of the one of the focal uh, questions is, in particular, uh, looking at um, a community-level emergency action plans. As you're aware, uh, the state of Alaska has has identified a number of communities at, as at risk from coastal erosion, and Craig Fleener has been tasked by the governor to look in more detail at how. Um, um, the, uh, the community response plans can be can can be made more effective, and so this group is reviewing different approaches from from around the Arctic on on those issues, and in particular, identifying uh, information data products from from sustained observations that are that are relevant in this context. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and then the the, the um, other uh, example that I want to discuss in a bit more detail is is theme six. Um, and as you may be aware, there's, there's quite a bit of interest at, at the national level in, in community-based observations, um, as well as international at the level of SEON um, and um, uh, beyond. And, and this group is, is – um, uh, last week we were at the Alaska Forum on the Environment and had, had a, a session there 
to have have a bit more of a of a conversation with uh, environmental uh, tribal environmental coordinators here from the state uh, uh, of Alaska, but um, also involving some folks folks from Canada, and and this is going to be an interesting uh, interesting theme because it it um, all these themes are are basically going to have three individual breakout sessions at the summit where where the um, the, the the program for these individual themes. Uh, combines a combination of, of presentations from white paper authors, discussion of some of the key recommendations and action items that the group leads are working on, and then um, in, a, in, a, in a fourth session that will be cross-cutting across all the themes, there's going to be more of a conversation about how these different themes are linked and what, what are overarching uh, concerns or, or uh, goals that, that one will want to address. And clearly this, this theme here lends itself to that. This, this group is is involving a number of, of indigenous peoples organizations and permanent participants as well, and it's it, it looks like the, the the summit because it's being held in Alaska because we anticipate strong participation by indigenous peoples representation from represent from from a number of Arctic countries including Russia. Um, it'd be interesting to see what this group uh, comes up with in in regards to what what are some of the concerns by um, indigenous peoples, First Nations, uh, Native Alaskans, um, with regards to research um, in, in the area, and, and what are some of the things that can be done to uh, address those concerns. Um, so I think um, if, if you go to the next slide, that, that, that was basically all I had. Um, yeah, this is just uh, uh, for you to um, review where, where, where to get more information. Um, we're um, the, the the broad agenda is up on the website, and and we um, plan to have the detailed agenda for the 24 individual breakout sessions up here very soon as well. It's it's been both interesting but also a bit challenging, making sure that these different breakout sessions uh, nicely complement one another. We have some speakers that are actually cutting across these sessions um, to help foster uh, conversations across across the different themes. And so that's something that we'll, um, we'll be refining here in, in the next couple of weeks. And uh, that, that's basically it. I'd be happy to take any questions. Any questions for HIO, assuming people can talk? Um, Hi, this is Sarah. Thank you for that really great presentation. It really, um, uh, it, it, it seems like a presentation you should give at the start of the summit so so people know know what they're there for and what they're in for. Um, but it really was helpful. Um, I have a question about outputs on the other end. It, what, what's the intended um, products from this? So so one uh, product that, that's more of a, uh, Sort of that's closest to the research world, if you will, is that we are planning to um, uh, publish a special issue of, of a journal, uh, similar to what we had for the first summit, but but this time probably a bit more comprehensive and a bit uh, more um, sort of a bit more uh, well, yeah, just a bit more comprehensive. Um, where basically we're hoping that we will both provide an opportunity for people to submit. Um, white papers that have been expanded uh, in, in a way so that they will be fully fully peer reviewed, but then also have a section in the in the journal that will include um, uh, some of these brief reports and and synthesis papers. Uh, so that's going to be one um, one core product. The other product is going to be a more specific uh, set of uh, recommendations, action items. And, and next steps that will be jointly produced by the by the different working group leads and the executive organizing committee and and uh, uh, that is is going to be important as well because again what we're what we're hoping is that some of the some of the items that are going to be coming up at the summit would directly translate into things that different Arctic Council working groups. Uh, or, for that matter, say on as as sort of a uh, an entity that that goes beyond the Arctic Council can actually take up and and uh, work work with as well, 
And so in order to facilitate that, the final session of the summit on Friday is actually going to be a joint, is, is going to be a combination of, of presentation of these recommendations and action items and a review by um, Arctic Council, by, by chairs or, or key members of Arctic Council working groups and, and representative of the permanent participants for the Arctic Council. And so um, that product or, or those sets of products are going to be uh, fairly, fairly important in terms of uh, providing providing guidance to those entities, and then beyond that, um, I mean, to me, those are those are the, the two key elements. And then we'll have we'll have other products that are going to be more directed at uh, the different stakeholder groups that, that I are more um, parts of, of outreach uh, and, and and communication. Hi, uh, Hi. This is Renee. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, so I, I'm glad you answered, um, um, provided that information because that did answer my the, the main part of my question. But I think this would also serve, since Sandy just presented on the IARPIC um, uh, uh, reorganization, the, the, the plan, the new plan, I would certainly think that this would feed the recommendations coming out of this uh, uh, AOS would certainly feed into that process, but also the ongoing efforts within the national strategy for the Arctic region, you know, the White House uh, Arctic Executive Committee. I would certainly think that would be very beneficial uh, in that respect as well. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Renee. Th th those are <coughs> th those are those are good points, and I, I I should point out. I mean, I'm a bit fuzzy today here, but you, you're right. I mean, the uh, you know, IARPIC or, or the potential for our pick to harvest some of that material is 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 significant, but then at the same time, of course, and that's why, why we're grateful for people like Jeremy and others who've, who've contributed already tremendously to the to the organization and planning of this. Um, it's it's through that work and through that engagement that we can be sure that different products are actually useful at, at the level of say our pick collaboration teams or or our pick our pick in general. Um, so that's where both the work in these in these different breakout groups, as well as review of the uh, of the synthesis papers, and then the follow up work after after the summit is is going to be important, so that the um, you know the products are actually digestible. And and one of the one of the challenges I, I see is that you know because it, it because of international involvement, you know. I, I think we 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 want to make sure that we really push hard on getting down to specifics as well. For example, with you know with Geo, um, uh, just reviewing some of, some of the documents that that uh, that the theme that focuses on on links between global um, observing initiatives and and the Arctic has has put together. That looks very promising, but at the same time, um, you know, being sp very specific about how these links. Would, would actually be implemented, or what the specific programs would be that that create that linkage is 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 going to require a bit more work. This is um, Betsy in Anchorage, Betsy Baker. Um, first, Ohio had they had a great turnout at the Alaska Forum on the Environment, and I don't know, Ohio, if you want to say anything more about um, sort of responses there, but I sensed a great interest from a largely Alaska Native audience. Um, and I don't know how that will translate into people actually attending. And then the other piece is not so much product, but sort of preparation. And I, at the forum, there were copies available of the special edition of the Arctic from the last Arctic Observing Summit. And I would just really encourage people to take a look at that um, document also. I, I think that it's instructive and a good reminder of some of the things that can come out of the, the next summit in March. Thanks, Betsy. Actually, one, one thing, or I, I don't know, uh, Jeremy, I don't want to hog time here, but if can I, is, is there time to have a bit more of a response? Absolutely, Haya. We've got uh, five more minutes and we don't have anything else on the agenda, so go for it. Um, I mean, the one thing that, that I find interesting and important is, and, and, and again, this is now just my 
personal perspective, sort of have, having having communicated with with some of some of the uh, folks from both from the Alaska Native community, but also because there's there's interest by Inuit Circumpolar Council and other other organizations. I mean, the one thing that I think is is going to be interesting to watch over the next few years is uh, how. Uh, some of the some of the permanent participants in the Arctic Council and, and Indigenous Peoples organizations are going to um, address and and respond to what what we also heard in Anchorage at the uh, Forum on the Environment is 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 this what what some community describe as you know pressure from the research community you know to conduct conduct research on on um, right. native lands and. Um, that, that, that of course is a very very complicated topic, but I, I, I would encourage IRPIC maybe even to uh, you know hear from from some of those folks who would be more uh, would be more you know better prepared to talk about this than than I can. But but my sense is that this summit in particular might be a good good opportunity for for anybody who's interested in those issues to catch up with with people um, in in the context of the breakout sessions. But my sense is that, um, and, and this is not just for Alaska, but, but certainly in Canada as well. You know, Canada ha had uh, this what they call the New Arctic Research Paradigm implemented a few years back, uh, that required direct uh, communication and permitting of research projects by um, the um, by First Nations in in Alaska's in sorry in in Canada's Arctic, and um, it, it, it's it's interesting. My sense is that there is a Combination of, of a bit of disillusionment um, by by folks in Canada about how how well that implementation has worked, but also a sense that there's a need to really address this issue well, and of course in in the U.S. you know here it's going to come up again as as um, we we look at um, you know, best research vessels coming into into uh, U.S. waters, not just our own Sikuliak, but also uh, you know foreign foreign country vessels. And so, um, sorry, I'm, I'm rambling a bit here, so I'll, I'll just stop short. But I, I think this is going to be a very, very interesting um, conversation, and it's, it's early enough now um, that that engaging in that conversation, in particular for those who are representing agencies that that are, are working in uh, Arctic Alaska that require consultation with with tribal or, or local government, that this might be might be something to keep an eye on. All right, thank you very much, Hayo. Do we have any other pressing questions at the moment? I want to be respectful of people's time and keep it to an hour. So uh, any any other issues right now that we need to discuss? Jeremy, if we have just a second, I did want to let people know that the data team is meeting tomorrow and just um, relevant to what we were just talking about. Um, they have a presentation by um, Carolina Behe on um, uh, the implications and recommendations for data and information collection and curation as it relates to the Alaska Inuit Food Security Program. So I thought I just wanted to call people's attention to that. And I do want to encourage the observing team to keep an eye on the events page because there are so many teams that are having meetings that have some sort of observing component to them. So just kind of keep an eye on the page and and uh, pull up ones that might be of interest to you. All right, thank you very much for that, Sarah. 